Democratic candidate for Governor Jack Conway will appear on this weekend's Kentucky Newsmakers, and he says it's his experience that makes him the right man for the job. Bill Bryant has more from Conway about the upcoming election in the bottom line. Good evening. Last weekend, we featured a Kentucky Newsmakers interview with Republican candidate for Governor Matt Bevin. This weekend, your chance to hear from Democratic nominee Jack Conway. In a year when outsiders seem to be in, Conway has a long resume in politics, including two terms as Attorney General, campaigns for Congress and the U.S. Senate, and years as General Counsel in the Governor's office. But Conway makes the case that his experience is an asset when it comes to making important decisions. I will not go off half cocked. I will not go off unprepared. And one thing about being governor, if you're going to be a good governor, is you can't act like you have all the answers. I'm not here today, and I'll never be in front of the people of Kentucky acting like I have, have all the answers. But you know what I've done during my career? I've built up a lot of relationships and a lot of friendships, and I know how to get the people around me in very quick order to help me make the right decision. You can see the full interview with Jack Conway on Kentucky Newsmakers Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats Sunday at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. So you can set your DVR or catch it then. And our interview with Matt Bevan is available online at KentuckyNewsmakers.com. We'll be interviewing independent Drew Curtis for next week's program. The Kentucky legislature comes to Frankfurt in early January to deal with a newly sworn in governor. And a group with increasing clout at the Capitol is the Kentucky Distillers Association. CN2 reports the distillers are hoping to see some rules loosened. That includes increasing a current three liter limit for alcohol bought at distilleries as well as larger sample limits. And they'll push for allowing distilleries to be allowed to sell drinks just as wineries and breweries can already do. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Police raid two convenience stores in Lexington tonight. More on the month-long investigation into a shoplifting ring. A murder investigation underway now in Louisville after two people were shot to death early this morning. Coming up, we'll tell you about a horse with a famous pedigree being brought back to health in Jessamine County. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. Police say that shoplifters stole items from Kroger, then later resold those items at convenience stores. And today, state police raided two stores in Lexington after a month long investigation. Police arrested three people and charged them with engaging in organized crime. They say they found several cases of beer and cosmetics that store employees tried to sell as their own. Tonight, Hillary Thornton is tracking the investigation. She has our top story at 5 30. Several different agencies hit two different Lexington businesses as part of an investigation with Kroger. We recovered uh, several cases of Budweiser. Breaking up what police call an organized crime ring, taking stolen items like these cases of beer and selling them off as their own. State police say information from those caught stealing the beer is what led them to these convenience stores. Upon interviewing those shoplifters, they advised us that they were selling their product to stores throughout the region. The cases of Budweiser found through the raid at Nichols Food Mart on Paris Pike, while the second raid on Florence Avenue revealing boxes of stolen women's cosmetics, all stolen from various Kroger's. The raids also resulting in three arrests, Nikel Ildemar and Jao Batista Da Silva at the Paris Pike business, and Mafid Ayad at the Florence Avenue Food Mart, all three charged with engaging in organized crime. The store owners were aware that they were selling the stolen product. They would actually place orders with shoplifters. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. State police say some of the items were bought for pennies on the dollar. Jailers in eastern Kentucky are investigating after they say an inmate tried to sneak in drugs. 40 year old Willie Smith was booked into the Bell County Detention Center yesterday. The Bell County Jailer says Smith tried to sneak in more than 16 grams of crystal meth and pills inside his body. Investigators say the street value of the meth is about $1,300. Police say they also found more than $1,800 in cash and two cell phones in Smith's pockets. Two people are dead and another injured after a shooting in Louisville. Police say it happened at a home on Northwestern Parkway this morning. Right now, they're still trying to figure out what led to the shooting. The names and ages of the victims have not been released. The third shooting victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. 
Get ready for a cold weekend here in the bluegrass. If you have plants, take note because we could see some frost overnight. Sounds like we're talking about layers, Mr. Jim Caldwell. <laughs> Layer up, right? You're going to need them. You absolutely will moving forward. Even during the daytime hours this weekend, you're going to need an extra jacket or a jacket, period. Something that maybe you haven't had to wear recently. You'll need it. Let's look at the daily breakdown as we highlight some of the things coming at us here. So far, uh, it's easy. It's the coldest weekend of fall, naturally, with those low and mid 50s and temperatures hovering in the low to mid 30s at night tonight. And then on Sunday morning, we're likely in the upper 20s. Hard freeze likely at that point, but here's the positive spin on all of it. Well, we have a little bit of a recovery that begins Monday. Now, Monday's not going to be off the charts warm, but as we go through the week, we'll get things back to where they should be for this time of year, which is warmer than what they are right now. And we are in the low and mid-60s out there. And if you've been outside, it's not terrible, but you can certainly feel that there is certainly a chill in the air, and it's been pretty tough. Our planner, as we move forward here, we look to the 8 o'clock hour. We'll call it clear and chilly around 49 degrees into the early morning. How about some areas of frost with 34 still kind of hanging out at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and then we're only around 53 for a high coming up into the afternoon and evening. So we are talking downright cold temperatures, especially at night into the weekend, and we will track them hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. A man is in jail, another in the hospital after a stabbing this morning. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Leslie County. Police say it happened at a home on Hopeful Lane in Hyden. They say Justin Nance got into a fight with Richard Henson and then took Henson's knife and stabbed him in the throat. Crews rushed Henson to UK hospital where he is in intensive care. A gentleman that had gotten there just prior to the fight. I said he came around the side of the house and, and saw the fight going on and saw the blood and the knife being wielded and uh, got him uh, separated enough to where he could give first aid. Police arrested Nance and charged him with assault. And in Laurel County, a man is in jail charged with child abuse after deputies say an infant ended up in the hospital. Deputies arrested 28-year-old Jacob Johnson at a home in London on Wednesday after someone brought an unresponsive 8-month-old baby to the hospital. We're told Johnson had taken Percocet and left half a pill on a plate out in the open. Deputies say the child was left unattended and took the drug. They say Johnson gave them several different stories before telling them what actually happened. He's charged with falsely reporting an incident, criminal abuse and wanton endangerment and public intoxication. They say she looked like a skeleton when she arrived at their facility. Tonight, a group in central Kentucky is nursing a neglected horse back to health. Hannah arrived at the Kentucky Humane Center in Jessamine County in August. Volunteers say she was severely underweight at the time. As WKYT's Mike Linden found out, Hannah has a famous pedigree. At the Kentucky Equine Humane Center in Jessamine County, Staff and volunteers nurse horses back to health and prepare them for adoption. But for one horse who arrived at the center without a name in late August, she was severely underweight with problems walking as a result of neglect. One of the first things we always ask people is if they have a picture, can they send it to us just so we can visually see you know, what the horse looks like. So as soon as we saw Hannah, we took her the very next day. She was basically a skeleton with skin on it. When Hannah first arrived at the Equine Humane Center, veterinarians graded her body condition on a scale of one to nine, nine being obese and one being emaciated. Hannah was a one. While staff didn't know much about Hannah's past, after research into the thoroughbred tattoo inside her lip, they found a match. Hannah is the great-great-granddaughter of Triple Crown winner Seattle SLU. It's a relief to be able to figure out who she is, and also, um, you know, it gives her her dignity back. Since arriving in late August, Hannah has gained nearly 100 pounds, and with the help of specially designed horseshoes, is beginning to walk better. Humane Center staff say taking care of a horse, like any living thing, isn't to be taken lightly. You just need to understand what's involved and, and get a little bit more experience. You don't want to just jump into it knowing nothing um, because then the horse can end up in this situation um, by accident. In Jessamine County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Humane Center leaders say with another four to six months of rehabilitation and training, Hannah should be ready for adoption. 
Tonight is the night that many UK fans have had circled on their calendars for months. Big Blue Madness starts in a little more than an hour. Fans will get the chance to see both the men's and women's basketball teams in action. As you might remember, many people camped out for days to get their tickets. Big Blue Madness will air from 7 to 9 on the SEC network. It's not unusual for a cell phone to get warm, but a growing number of people are complaining that their new iPhones are running hot. In one extreme case, the victim says his phone went up in smoke. And the smoke was just coming through the middle of it. It's one of the hottest phones on the market. Just ask Kevin. And just, I heard a little pops, pop noise. The college student says he was sitting in his car last week when he hit the home button on his iPhone 6 Plus, and the device literally went up in smoke. I was smoking. It was really hot. So I threw it. I dropped it here. Where he points out it left a mark. Apple refused to comment on the situation, though it did agree to replace Kevin's phone. This is the new one. But Yahoo Tech editor Dan Tynan says Kevin's not the only one complaining their iPhone 6 got too hot to handle. There's a lot of chatter online about people not being able to touch their phones because they're so hot. The processor has just gotten so powerful that um, the phone can't handle the heat. But if the phone blows up, I'm, I'm sure he to says let you overheating know. happens in all phones, but this iPhone 6 specifically has a lot going on under the hood. The temperature overheating. But iPhone users say more needs to be done. One posted, I smell a firmware update coming. Every time I look at it, I'm just going to remind myself my phone blew up in my hand. Kevin, whose car now has a scar, would like that too. He'd also like Apple to pay for the damage. So what to do? Some advice? Turn off unnecessary apps and automatic updates. Lower the brightness level so the phone doesn't have to work as hard.